foolish beasts by brooks and by rocks. Till at last, he tried to scare Bob. But Bob, hearing from beneath the main, that raucous voice, so petulant, so vain, Hello, everybody. It's me, Reverend Steve. I am nervous because I'm going to drink a 41-year-old beverage that might kill me. There was a TV show called Dallas. Dallas was a soap opera that originally premiered in April of 1978 as a miniseries. But the miniseries was so popular that in September of 1978, they decided to turn it into a short one-season TV show. It became so popular that it ran from 1978 to 1991. One character, uh, Bobby Ewing, was killed off, but he was so popular that they decided to make his death a dream. Really stupid. And then, of course, the, the main character was sort of the, the patriarch of the family. His name was J.R. Ewing. In the 1980s, they made a beer. Premium beer. J.R. Ewing's private stock came out in the year 1980. And it says on the bottom here, if you have to ask how much my beer costs, you probably can't afford it. I purchased very cheaply a six-pack of this. One had a hole in it, and it was empty, but the other five were still open and sealed, and so I put this in the fridge for a while, and I'm going to drink it. Surprisingly, I posted about this on Twitter, and I'm like, hey, I've got this 41-year-old beer. Who wants to see me try it? And the answer was a big, resounding, no, are you serious? You could die which I wasn't expecting from Twitter, but I basically got shamed. And uh, so I'm going to open this. This is weird. Do you see this? How, how do I? Ooh, look at that. That's the That's weirdest. The old V8. Huh? That's the old V8? Yeah, yeah, it's like V8. Okay. So, um, all right. Shake it. No, I didn't shake it. I've been a drink of 41-year-old beer now, so Pinky's up for the classy stuff. So, okay. Hmm. First off, it tastes dusty. <laughs> It might be a little dust on the bottom. But when you get past that, okay, so you know when when you're like young, when you're like in your 20s, and you're like, I'm going to go get beer. You're talking to us. The cheapest beer imaginable. Okay, so so there's like, there's like cheap beer that will burn your mouth because it's horrible. And then there's cheap beer where it's like Mickey's. That's what this is. This isn't bad, but it's also not good. It 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 tastes all right. It tastes all right. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. It tastes cheap. It doesn't taste as uh as a premium as J.R. Ewing from the hit show Dallas, but no, this is all right. This is pretty good. I wouldn't recommend it, but yeah, this isn't that bad. 
it's cheap and dusty. But I've I've drank cheap and dusty beer before. You know, go into some sketchy convenience store and they have a 98 cent uh, pint of some beer you've never heard of before. And you buy that, that's what this tastes like. Uh, it's not that bad. Not that bad. It's all right. This is a weird video, but hey, thanks for watching. And if you're watching this during the podcast, hey, break time. Buddy and I are peeing. I had some crazy nicknames back in the 70s, but all those friends died in the 80s. I wonder who else I can call. Hello? Hey. Kind of cute. What's your name? Nancy? Oh, hi, Nancy. Stand by your window so I can see you. You stand a million miles away. Oh, I'm sorry, hon. I'm not allowed to have windows uh, court ordered. So, um, you sound kind of foxy. Uh, but it's not too personal. When was the last time you had sex? Coming up on the seventh day. It's okay. I checked Guinness. The record's 11. Listen, I know who he is. Uh, you know who, who what is? Killer. What killer? What the hell are you battling about? And if he gets me, I'm pretty sure you're next. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa what, what kind of shit are you getting me into, Pumpkin? Just give me some help nailing the guy when I bring him out. What are you battling about? My dream. What? <laughs> if I can't, then you can all relax because it's just a case of me being nuts. Yeah, and for, and for some reason, this is really turning me on. Then you won't mind cold cocking this guy when I bring him out. What? <laughs> you heard me. I grab the guy in my dream. You see me struggling, so you wake me up. We both come out, you whack the fucker, and we got him. Um, Pumpkin, please, please explain to me what you mean by whacked. Meet me at my porch at midnight. Oh, and meanwhile, whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Okay, Pumpkin, you're freaking me out, but for some reason I'm also finding you very attractive. So, uh, how about you and me be girlfriend and boyfriend, huh? <laughs> happened this week. Go back to the movie. Spider baby. Come on, come on, be my spider baby. Yeah. Don't be afraid, girl. Come on, come on, be my baby. Spider baby. Yeah. yeah. I feel that a long red sugar. Spin your right away from me. I'm a spider, and my name is Bitey. I'm a Leo, and I love dewy spider webs in the sunset. Long walks on the pavement, and hiding in shoes. And I'm looking for a special female, and girl, not everyone sees you the way I do. So let me look deep inside all eight of your beautiful eyes. And I don't see human like other people do. I see a glorious spider, baby, yeah, so I want to let you know, I play spider with you all night long, shimmy here, up next to me, and do that stanky spider dance you do, so shake that cephalothorax, and your abdomen do, ah girl, come on, come on, be my spider, baby, yeah, be my spider, baby, come on, come on, And I know
know how it is when a male spider tries to show you what he's made of. And I gotta let you know, I don't mind dying for just one night of sweet spider love. If that's what it takes to get near your girl, a hungry female may consume any invertebrate that comes along, including her suitors. But baby, but baby, I don't mind because you're truly worthy. You're worth it, baby. My pedipals are palpitating, circulating. I could be perspirating, but I can't because I got an ectoskeleton. But that don't matter, nah. So let me be your daddy, baby. Hopelessly tangled up in your silky web. Let me kiss your fangs before you jump off my head. Yeah. Species. Females eat the males after sweet, sweet love. But I don't mind. Nah. You see, I got eight boots on my legs for knocking. I notice you do too. Spider baby rocking all night long. You see, even spider love is blind. Come on. Ooh. Come on, come on, be my spider baby. Sixteen yeah. boots of spider knocking. Come on, come on. You know it's true, girl. Come on, girl. come on, come on, be my spider baby. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be afraid. <laughs> come on, come on, be my baby. Yeah. Be my spider baby. Yeah. yeah. Come on, come on, be my spider baby. Yeah. Be your daddy's spider lonely. Come on, come on, be my baby. Musty odors invade your space. Get Concrobium Mold Control. As it dries, only Concrobium crushes mold and mildew at its roots, leaving an invisible antimicrobial shield so it won't grow back. It's odorless, too. For the safe way to defend your home from mold and mildew, Concrobium. And don't forget to protect against musty odors and moisture damage with Concrobium Moisture Grabbers. You don't have to imagine that we're back. Because we are. If I had a million dollars, I'd stay in bed with you all day. We're letting people go, John. You're the first. We have a lot of applicants, all of whom have 10 years' experience. Okay. Things will get better. You're gonna have an amazing job one day. My Antiques Roadshow is coming this weekend. Why don't we see if we can find something and get on TV? I'm so sorry for this, John. What the Look! It gives you money when you hurt yourself. We have to promise to stop before it gets out of control. We make our million and we stop. I'll take the full Brazilian. I want it all gone. Let's do this the old fashioned way. So, John, are you still with the same company? We switched to private investing. <sighs> it looks like you're doing all right. Shabbat Shalom. Where is the teapot? Our grandmother risked her life to save that teapot during the Holocaust. We have to find out what this thing is. The teapot possesses extraordinary power. You are in grave danger. Most people kill themselves for decades and get nowhere. It's a gift from the gods. We said we'd stop when it got out of hand. Oh, I'd say 
it's out of here. Now tell me how can you save yourself? You're turning evil. There is nothing evil about wanting more. What's happening? Your face, your eyes, like hanging out. I'm fine. Whatever it is that's going on, it's not worth it. I'm saying we didn't warn you. What sort of dog do you two have? I heard him howling last night. Ow, ow. That was just some really violent sex. Storytime with Mei Lin, a one-of-a-kind, hyperactive and interactive blend of adult stand-up comedy and children's storytime because you're never too old for a good story. Mei Lin is going on tour in 2024 and after much deliberation, they have chosen the following wildly original name for their tour, Storytime with Mei Lin on tour, a one former man show. Brought to you in part by Spite. Don't miss your chance to see her on tour before Republicans ban her, just like they're busy banning all history books and, for that matter, books books. For more information on Mei Lin, like, I don't know, try Google maybe, or Bing if you're a weirdo. Hey, is Ask Jeeves still a thing? Probably not. Oh well. Storytime with Mei Lin. And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Ronnie! What type of a name for a product is Concrobium? Concrobium? Yeah, that's the name of the... We just played a commercial for Concrobium, which is the commercial of the mold remover that yeah. features Grimy Mold Guy. We just played it, and it's called Concrobium. And it's like, what the fuck? That sounds... A Concrobium sounds like what they should have called unobtainium in avatar yes I mean, I'm a unobtainium that's just bad writing <laughs> that's bad songwriting pt also uh my 18 year old reminded me um we had a disastrous time at the eclipse but i i'm gonna wait until we're farther into the second half of the show to really bring it up but uh it's time buddy it's time it is time yes bunny my friend it is time once again for all of us here on, at the pope on film podcast to boot scoop boogie our way to whip and or nay nay our way to lambada our way lambada the forbidden dance our way into the second half. Do you know why it's called the Forbidden Dance Bunny? Uh, marketing? No, 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 no. It, it's a long dance. And it has a lot to do. I'm Hispanic. So I know about the Forbidden Dance. 
Let yes. me teach you a little bit about my culture, buddy. First off, when you're doing Lombada, they forbid a dance. The guy's dick is out the whole day. Okay. Guy's dick is just all the way out. And also, while you're doing the Lombada with your partner, uh, the woman is constantly pissing on the floor. Uh-huh. And one of the reasons why it's called the Forbidden Dance is you might slip and fall. People yeah. have broken their hips, broken their legs. People have died doing this because the floor is covered in lady pee. Yeah. And guys are just whipping their dick out. Indiana Jones in it. Yes. It's kind of sounding sounding like it's only done by aristocrats. Yeah, you can slip and bruise your coccyx. And then at the end of the dance, you sing Burn, Bitch, Burn by Kiss from their 1984 al album a Animalize. Okay. And you do that because you know Kiss will sue the shit out of you. <laughs> Most of the lawsuits in like the 80s and the 90s we're from Kiss suing people doing the Lombada. Yeah. Because how dare you sing our song, Animalize. How dare you sing our song, Burn, Bitch, Burn. That's from their 1984 album, Animalize. Um, and then when you're done doing the Lombada, you draw a picture of Mohammed. Yeah. So, so there's that. That's why it's forbidden. Oh. And there's no dipping your partner in the forbidden dance while you're doing la bada, the forbidden dance. You don't dip your partner. Instead of dipping your partner, you use lime wire to download a limp biscuit out. Oh. And again, that's another reason why it's a forbidden dance. You might get a uh you might get a uh cease and desist from the copyright yeah. from the studio. Yeah. You might get a a uh, lawsuit, a and also it's LimeWire. You might get a, a, a computer virus. Multiple viruses, yes. Yeah. So that's why. And then, of course, it's preferred that when you are using LimeWire to download a Limp Bizkit album at the end of Lombada, the Forbidden Dance, um, it's preferable that you download their 2000 album, Chocolate Starfish and the Hot Dog Flavored Water, obviously. Yes. But it's actually um, what album you of Limp Biscuits you download at the end of Lombada, The Forbidden Dance. I'm saying it like I'm getting paid by The Forbidden Dance. Um, it's very much regional. In the East Coast, they primarily download um, Limp Biscuits 1999 album Significant Other, which of course features both Nookie and Break Stuff. In Tucson, they yeah. primarily download their latest album, 2021's Limp Biscuit Still Sucks. Why? Because Tucson is fucking weird. <laughs> um, anyway, <coughs> this has been May Lynn's Lombada Time, brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Download today. Um, I just thought there isn't a lot to uh to talk about about this movie. It's pretty basic and predictable. How are you guys back? I was back to the forbidden bitch at your back. Ten four. Okay. Love you, honey. I just finished talking about Lambada, the forbidden dance. Natasha and I Lambada every night. Yeah. Every night. She's just pissing all over the floor. I got my lady dick out. Yeah. That's that's what brings our family together. Um, so what was I talking about? Oh yes, the podcast. <laughs> this week we take a shot at the dark with an obscure high concept indie film that we both had never heard of. So we were going in blind. Uh the 2011 or 2012 or 2013 film, The Brass Teapot. Give me some dramatic music, Bunny. Dun, 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 dun. Thank you. Now, pump your brakes, Bunny, okay? Okay. Pump your brakes. Before we rip into this movie, 
I want to give it a little bit of credit. Before we start ripping into this movie and all of its flaws, and there are many, I just want to go into this with a little bit of positivity. First off, the concept has promise. I like the idea. Don't think you needed to bring violent Hasidic Jews into this, but you know. No. It, it, that feels vaguely offensive, but you, you know what? Uh, I thought it was a decent concept. Also, what a strange, random ass cast this movie has. Yeah. What the hell? First off, Rory Gilmore's in it. Looking good. Secondly, SNL's Bobby Moynihan is in this. Uh, who else? Maybe from Arrested Development. Maybe Funke? Is that how they pronounce it in Arrested Development? It's been forever since. And it's and been. the the lead guy whose face was bothering me so much that I eventually had to look him up to mm -hmm. find out that he was the worst part of Forbidden Kingdom. And the way the way primarily that I know him. He was one of the stars of the Disney live-action family comedy Sky High. Oh, that's how I know him. And then, oh, uh, there's so much. There's so much more. Um, one of the guys was the white American star of the short-lived NBC sitcom Outsourced. Okay, which I liked. I liked that show. Uh, who else? Uh, the Chinese guy was it was in like the last two or three Wes Anderson movies. Okay, he was in uh Asteroid City, and he was in the French Dispatch. I'm not sure if he was in any other. Fucking Jack friggin McBrayer from Thirty Rock shows up. Thomas Middleditch from Silicon Valley plays one of the two possibly offensive. Uh, violent Hasidic Jews. So basically, they were they just like drove down Hollywood Boulevard and picked up all the actors that had signs that said "We'll act for food." Basically, uh, Matt comedian Matt Walsh has a cameo as as the Antiques Roadshow guy. Um, <laughs> the the redneck. The redneck. Oh, we will be getting back to the antique roadshow guy. Okay. You hey, don't worry I... about the antique roadshow guy. Okay. We're going to say some things okay. about the antique roadshow guy. In the film, they made it seem as if he got onto Antiques Roadshow like in an afternoon. Like it's that easy to get on Antiques Roadshow. Yeah. Like, I'm going to go out. Get some Dairy Queen. Maybe stop at uh, the library and pick up something. Maybe go on Antiques Roadshow. It's not that easy to get on a TV show. No. But uh, Matt Walsh has cameo. Kristen M Miliotti was in this. He was. She was the redneck landlord's girlfriend in the trailer who was also the love interest in the much better movie, Andy Sandberg's Palm Springs. Yes. Which we did for the podcast, I believe. Um, and then, yeah, at the center of all this, the couple at the center of all this, the hubby is from what you said. What did you say the husband was from? Uh, uh, Forbidden Kingdom. Forbidden Kingdom. And a also, movie I the, love, but would totally replace him in a second. Yeah. And the Disney movie Sky High. And the attractive wife is one of the main characters in the beloved series Ted Lasso. Oh. Okay. And I'd like to take one of our trademark the Pope on film asides here, Bunford Williamson. Have you ever fucking seen Ted Lasso? No. Neither have I. I, I. I just haven't bothered. Oh, the Southern Fried American fish out of water is going to teach the hoity-toity Brits about some down-home Southern hospitality. Don't care. 
I just don't care. And to be clear, I'm not saying that because my fucking older brother, Pepito, loves the show. Oh, I just God. haven't bothered seeing. No, it doesn't, yeah, and it neither doesn't has hold any ears. interest for me either. Yeah. You know, I've seen, like, clips and shit, and it's like, okay, so? Yeah. Don't care. Neither has Debonair Toast, who has her own Spotify channel um, yeah. on the Spoofity. Her music is really great, and I really love it. It's sort of like a like a techno, goth, uh, instrumental, uh, synth, lo-fi sort of thing, and I really dig it. And you should go listen to Debon Debonair Toast on Spotify. So, cool. yeah, I haven't, seen, I haven't seen Ted Lasso. Don't care for it. Never, never bothered to see it. I love that dude who plays Ted Lasso, but I don't care. I just don't care. Okay, with that out of the way. I wanted so much more from this movie. Yes. I thought the premise was decent. I watched the opening credits and got really, really interesting. Interested in what they were laying down in the opening credits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it was downhill from there. It was literally downhill from the opening fucking credits. The woman, the uh, attractive wife at the center of all this, she's actually a British actress, which I'm assuming is why she has a horrible high-pitched American accent that I freaking hate. Well, okay, and, and I really have to put, like, a big asterisk next to my review for this movie. But I'm old. Somewhere along the line, I have crossed that threshold, and I am old now. Okay? Mm-hmm. They both looked way, way, way too young for the parts. Yeah. And when we would start having spicy scenes, I, I, I felt uncomfortable. Like I get that. You're just fucking kids. Quit that. Yeah. And also, nothing happened in this movie that... I was surprised about. And how did they get a whole neighborhood populated by high school kids? Good question. Playing adults. Well, I have a theory about that. I believe that this movie is Rory Gilmore's character, the rich bitch. Yeah. Um, this movie is in an alternate universe where Rory married Logan Huntsberger, divorced him, took half of his money, and just kept being a rich-ass bitch. Yeah. So this movie, The Brass Teapot, is firmly in the, um, GG, the GGEU, the Gilmore Girls Extended Universe. Yeah. Because I loved Rory Gilmore, but once that fucking Logan Huntsberger got into his into her life, she became fucking insufferable. Yeah. You mean to tell me that like one of the top students of, in Chilton Prep is stealing boats and collecting trash on the side of the road? Fuck you, Logan Huntsberger. You ruined Rory Gilmore. Yeah. 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 In the beginning, they've got like a house. And yeah. it's like, already this is science fiction. If these young people who haven't been far removed from high school have a house, that period, that's a bit surprising to me. Yeah. I found the guy to be kind of generic. And then I found the woman to have like this high-pitched speaking voice that I freaking hated and I wanted to throw her through a window. 
but I I like all the people in this movie. It's got like a great cast. I thought the concept was interesting, but you never really know who any of these people are to give a shit about. <clears throat> no. You know, I therefore I, I, I did were, not like any of them. They were pretty generic. I don't think that that it's believable that this random cute little couple would so quickly turn so dark and corrupt. Yeah. And I love the fact, I, 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 I hate the fact that, like, we need to find out about this teapot. Oh, look, we found this book. It's filled with information about this teapot. Let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it. I'm sure it's fine. Let's keep using the teapot. And then she uses the teapot. And then, like, things are getting bad. We need to find out more about this. You had a whole fucking book. Yeah. And you were reading it. That's all the information you need. <laughs> you don't need to go to the to the guy from the Theopolis whatever fucking society because there's that freaking book that you already found that tells you everything. What but the like hell? okay, but like with the way the opening credits set up this teapot Every fucking art student would know about this goddamn teapot. Because it mm -hmm. appears in art all through history. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody would know the brass teapot. It would not be some, it, you know, it would be like the holy fucking grail. You yeah. know? So that's why yeah. when we get to the antique roadshow guy, he's like, I don't know, someplace in China? There you go. Okay, thank you. I was wondering what your problem was with the Antiques Roadshow guy. Like, are you fucking kidding? Like, like... With how they depicted this teapot in the credits, if you showed up with the teapot at the Antique Roadshow, he literally would have come in his pants. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. Like, like somebody just sauntered in, uh, and yes, yeah, you, you can just stop into the Antique Roadshow like you're stopping in 7-Eleven. You know, just mm -hmm. you happen to have the Hope Diamond on you, you know, you walk on. It happens like the same day. Yeah. It's everything else that happens. I'm going to say, how does he so easily... He gets on Antique Roadshow, and then it plays the same day. Apparently, it's Antique Roadshow Live. Yeah. Yeah. I did find the episode interesting, but it wasn't until the film was ended that I realized this would be great for an episode of Tales from the Dark Side. Or, I was really proud of this, Friday the 13th, the series. You remember that? Oh, God, yes. Yeah. Because it was two teams looking for, like, these cursed objects. This is an hour and 35-minute episode of Friday the 13th, the series. Yeah. This this movie did not know what it wanted to be. I mean, like, yeah. they did not present the teapot as a cursed object. Yeah. Which, of course, it was. Yeah. You know. I feel like this would be a great episode of the Twilight Zone, but I want to be clear here. 80s Twilight Zone. Yeah. 80s Not the Twilight new Zone? one. Huh? The 80s Twilight the... Zone? Yes, the new Twilight Zone. From the 80s. Not the one with Rod Serling. And not the most recent one with fucking Jordan Peele. And you are forgetting the one with Forrest Whitaker. Oh, shit, yeah, and the Forrest Whitaker one. No, the one in the 80s, the new Twilight Zone. It lasted for like a season or two, and then it was canceled. I was like, it wasn't that good. But that would be this movie. Would fit good there. Um, But a full-length feature film, I just don't think it has enough. And also, I think the tone sh shifts drastically. Yeah. 
and, and I'm like, sorry. When when she was when she was getting into the whole emotional harm thing, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. That's a bridge you're not coming back from. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. I, I I I cannot imagine. You know, like you ever, you know, somebody you cared about me, you speaking to me like that, knowing you're hurting me for money. Yeah. No, that's it. It's it's over. We're done here. <laughs> yep. Right out the door. Yeah. Right out the freaking door. But yeah, it starts off as like a funny slapsticky romantic comedy and then eventually it gets dark as fuck and i don't think i i think that drastic tonal shift like they get their happy ending in a sense because they are fleeing to mexico yeah i don't know how much of a happy ending it is because they are definitely going to be blamed for all the dead people. Yes. I wouldn't technically consider that a good ending. But it's it it's fun, lighthearted humor, romantic comedy, uh, high concept comedy about a teapot. Oh, you hurt yourself. As far as I'm concerned, there's only one important teapot, and that's Albert B. Fall. That's right. Being responsible for the infamous Teapot Dome disaster. The Teapot Dome scandal, which happened under Warren G. Harding's administration. That's the important thing. But of course, as they say, Bunny, a blessed object becomes curse, becomes a curse in human hands. That's what they say. And by they, I mean uh, Debonair Toast in the chat. Yes. Right, here. right over there. Uh, I was wondering who you were quoting. <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing. I I didn't hate this movie. You seem to have hated it. Um I'm yeah. eating popcorn during yeah. I'm eating popcorn during the podcast like professional. Um but I didn't hate it. But to use the term that was created by an a wise man, I feel like this is an airport movie. Yes. I feel like this is something that you're flipping through the TV, you see it on channel 45 at like 2 in the afternoon on a Sunday, you're bored, you have nothing else to do, you sit down, you watch this with commercial breaks, and you go, huh, that was interesting. It's an airport movie, but... Yeah. It- I, I don't know. I, when I when I first watched it, I I gave it airport movie status. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now that I've had to live with it a few days, yeah, I've gotten to hate it quite a lot more. Uh, it's not at swept away, starring Madonna. Yeah. Levels of hate. But yeah, there's a lot of hate here. Yeah. I gotcha. It's an airport movie. Let's do a few stats really quick, because I find this interesting. This is a 2013 movie. The internet says it's a 2012 movie, and the copyright at the end of the film says it's a 2011 movie. But here, at the Pope on Film podcast, we believe that the release date is when the film is released to the public. Yes. They finished the film in 2011. It premiered at film festivals in 2012. It was released to the public in 2013. So no IMDb, this is not a 2011 film, and no Wikipedia, no Wikipedia, this is not a 2012 film because that's when it was premiered at the Toronto Smelling Your Own Farts Festival. This is a 2013 movie. <clears throat> I am very passionate about this. I hate it when people are like, oh, this movie premiered at the Sundance Fart Festival in 2009, and it was released to the public in 2011. 
It's a 2009 movie. No, it ain't. 30 people saw it in 2009. Everyone else saw it in 2011. That doesn't make it a 2009 movie. 10 minutes. Um, but this is a 2013 movie. Um, it has a 6 out of 10 on IMDb, which isn't that bad. Yeah. It's decent, but then Rotten Tomatoes fucking hates it. It's got a 50% audience score. It's got like a 30% critic score. And you wouldn't believe how much money it made at the box office. Less than half a million. Ooh. Not a lot. That hurts. You want to know how little money this made? I'm pretty sure you can stream this film on Tubi. <laughs> where movies go to die. Yeah. Um, wow. I think this movie could benefit from a remake. I think it's an an, an interesting concept. Yeah, think... if, uh, if we replace every single thing in the movie with something good, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think you get a different script. You get different actors. I think that you could make this way funnier, way darker. You could have a bunch of different takes on this. Yeah. Um, but here's the interesting thing that I wanted to... I, I, I found the Brass Teapot's IMDb page. I found the Brass Teapot's letterbox scores. I found, I, I found the Brass Teapot on IMDb. And I found the Brass Teapot on Wikipedia. I found the brass teapot everywhere, but I was like, I want more information. There's got to be more information about this film. So I found a, a wiki fandom site. And I'm like, is, really? is, this, is this movie such an underground cult hit that it has a wiki fans? Um, a wiki fandom account? No, they don't. This is a fake wiki fandom page that is still up Whoa. about the brass teapot itself as if it's a real thing. I'm assuming this website is just a viral marketing, which would have been popular in 2011 or 12 or 13. Yeah. But this is a brass teapot wiki as if you are a historian who is interested in the history of the brass teapot. As if it is true. It even says at the end of the wiki, if you for more information, please go to the theosophicistsociety.org. And if you believe you have located the brass teapot or have information relating to its whereabouts, please in email info at the at theosophicistsociety.org. And there's pages for the Theosophist Society for Alchemy and Powers. Um, yeah, this is a fake Wikipedia site as if this movie was real. And I find it interesting. Now, okay, I so actually... now my brain is trying to block out the movie. So did, was there a scene in the movie at all where they went to a wiki page for it? No, no, oh. they didn't. This is like a fan. This is like, this is like a something that. I'm assuming the filmmakers would hope that people would stumble upon, you know? But I found this, the legend of the Brass Teapot is way more interesting than the actual film. The Brass Teapot is said to be made in part from the blood money paid in silver to Judas for the treason of Jesus of Nazareth, thereby imbuing the vessel with a powerful and mystical alchemy. And it tells alchemy and it tells the entire story of the history of the brass teapot i find it to be fascinating unfortunately none of this was in the movie again the the opening credits was awesome yeah the opening where credits were, were great where they were basically laying out the same thing just in a much more artistic way yeah best yeah. best opening credits uh i don't know if i want to go ever but the opening credits were really pretty great for this movie 
Yeah. And again, then it crashed and burned. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. If you're ever bored and you just want to watch something that you can also like be on your phone, <laughs> this is a great movie. This is a movie where you find it on Netflix and you go, eh, sounds interesting. And you put it on your queue. And then like a month or two later, you and your uh, wife, partner, spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, are like, what should we watch tonight? Oh, you know what? Let's try this thing, the brass teapot. What's it about? It's about some magical thing. And if you hurt yourself, you get money. Oh, that's interesting. And you see it. And then afterwards you go, oh, that was all right. That's this movie. Yeah. It's not great. You, I, I don't know if we should. Do, you, do we think this film got the Island of Dr. Moreau treatment and maybe there is a better cut somewhere in realms of impossibility? Probably. Maybe there is another cut of this. Man, hey, makers of the brass teapot, release the Snyder cut. <laughs> it's eight hours long in black and white and it tells the real story. Martian Manhunter is actually in yeah. the Snyder cut of the brass teapot. It's pretty exciting. And, it's and, and, and I like Tyler and his Dr. Moreau. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Everybody in there was working for themselves. Yeah. Everybody in the movie, The Island of Dr. Moreau, had their own script. It's like they made a movie, but Val Kilmer like, oh, I'm going to be the hero. And then uh, Marlon Brando's like, oh, I'm going to be drunk and hang out with my midget friend. And then like everyone wrote their own script, and then they they just put it all together and did some drugs and went to the jungle. Yeah, I mean, Doctor Moreau is just source material that I love. Like from being a kid watching The Island of Lost Souls with Bella Lugosi all the time. Yep. Before the Burt Lancaster remake, because again, I'm old. I saw yep. that version in the theaters. So I, I was quite happy seeing just a batshit insane version of the movie. Hell yeah. And, and I felt that it needed a batshit insane version of the movie. That's one of this. Yeah. Okay. So The Island of Dr. Moreau was a great remake because the original is good. How are you going to make this remake better by making it? That shit insane. Yeah. I respect that. That's kind of cool. Like, oh, they're remaking this film. Okay, it's just going to be exactly the same, but with loud special effects and modern music. And I, I don't particularly care for that. Like, there are so many movies where it's like, oh, they're remaking it with Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> yes. It's like, no, if you're going to remake the movie, make it totally year. different. <laughs> make it a musical. Make it in black and white. Make it fucking insane. I would love for someone to do that with this week's film, The Brass Teapot. Yeah. Someone make a crazy as hell version of it. So that's it for this week's show, The Brass Teapot. If it's on, you should. Uh, ooh, it had a director switch in filming. Uh, the Island of Doctor. Oh, right, not this one. This one was based on a comic book, but whatever. Um, next week, I say next week, but we're doing the show every other week, but I still like saying next week. I'm not going to change that. Next week's episode, we will be watching the 2022 Rafe Finds and that Russian chick from the New Mutants. Yeah. What is her name? Something um, Joy? Yeah. Uh, Anna Taylor Joy. The uh, horror, comedy, dramedy film, The Menu. Fucking love this movie. It's already on the cop cop. That's next week. But now that we're looking back at this week, the highs and the lows, the Lombada, uh, fuck Tom, stealing the Declaration of Independence. I have to say, I think this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. This has been a damn good episode. Last less than a minute before we get cut off by Zoom. I concur. So uh, it, I, I agree with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. 
And I am May Lin, and on behalf of the whole family, I'd like to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you do stuff as a Do, 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 do.